If you hood educated, I'm glad you made it. Allow me to unfold my knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from a hood brother's point of view to all of you here, there, and everywhere. Now check me out. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the brother that is accused of killing BTB Savage in a dri uh, drive-by shooting in Houston has been arrested. Now, allow me just to, you know, let me get on my gangster time. Y'all give me a break. Let me get on my, my gangster time right now, right? Um, he was arrested. Uh, the police ain't had to go kick down his mama doe, his uh, cousin doe, uh, a couple of his partner does. You know, you know when they looking for somebody, they kicking does in. Uh, they did not find him hiding in the closet or in the basement under the clothes or nothing like that. Uh, they didn't have to use the United States Marshals to go find him in different states or different countries and stuff like that, you know, because uh, he wasn't found, you know what I mean, nowhere outside of Texas. Uh, they did not have to use the FBI to go across, you know, the seas to go find him, you know, hiding in the hut somewhere in Africa or Asia or anything like that. Uh, Mr. Montrell turned himself in. Now, from a gangbanger's perspective, right? Since when? Since when, y'all? Uh, gangsters, gangbangers. I'm talking about men that would plan to kill other men and go out and kill other men. Turn themselves in to authorities on a murder. Now, I can understand, you know, you get a little simple robbery or something like that. You know, you get a breaking and entering. You know, you get a little something where you can do a couple years in the county or something like that. You go do your time. You come on home. But turning yourself in on a murder? Yeah, I, I can hear some of y'all, y'all like, come on, hood educated, man. I thought you for the people. I am for the people, but like I said before, give me, I'm giving it to you from a gangbanger's perspective right now. From a gangster perspective. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Since when gangsters started turning they self in on murders? This man turned himself in. This is abnormal behavior, but like I said in my last video, when you on the run for a murder and you ain't got no money, that pressure will bust pipes. Why? Because, like I said, ain't nobody trying to deal with you. Ain't nobody trying to answer your phones. Ain't nobody trying to send you no money. Don't nobody want to be connected to that murder. Gang, gang, family, friends, whatever, girlfriends, uh... Don't nobody want to be attached to that murder. And that type of pressure right there of feeling alone and feeling like you can't do nothing because you just roam in the streets. You can't drive in no cars. You can't do nothing. It makes people just, look, I'm going to go ahead and bow out. I'm going to submit. It's too much pressure on me. And can you imagine seeing your face on the news? Not just in the local news, but all on the internet all on YouTube for the world to see that, hey, look, they looking for him. That type of pressure right there bust pipes. That type of pressure right there would make a man fold because it's like, hey, I can't get away. I don't have no money to, to go across seas. I don't even have no money to go out of state. But this is the life of game banging, young men. This is the life of we finna go slide on our ops and we finna go kill something. Y'all see how it broke this man down? This 40-year-old man, young brothers, sisters, in classic men. Do y'all see how it broke him down? He don't even look the same. When you see his picture, he don't even look the same. So y'all got to understand something. Y'all want to be gang gang and do all that. These are the type of repercussions for doing all that. 
This right here is the consequences or one of the consequences of sliding for the gang and going to go kill people. This is a consequence that this man was so beaten down mentally that he turned himself in on a murder where he can get the death penalty or spend the rest of his life inside of a cage. Listen, young men, if you don't want that type of lifestyle, let me tell you how easy it is. Stop game banging. Yeah, it's that easy. Some people say, no, nah, hood educated, man. You know, when you in that lifestyle and all that, man, you and I understand y'all and I hear y'all. But when I say stop game banging, I'm saying this right here. Move, get out that environment. I don't care what state you in. You don't have to go, uh, you don't have to cross state lines to get out of that environment. There's suburbs that's far out, far out. There's other cities in your state that is far out where you can go to and start a whole new life. But you can't go to these new environments with that same gang bang mentality. You can't do that because if you take that mentality with you, then you're going to create an environment of unrest, misery, and death. So when you change your location, change your mentality with it. You are no longer a game banger. You are a tax paying citizen and you are going to follow the law. It's just that simple. Now, let me get into this demonstration. If you gangsters can't learn from this case right here, hey, can't nobody teach y'all nothing. Listen, Montreal, right? Remember I was questioning about the car? Y'all remember that, right? In my last video, in this video right here, check it out. Now, y'all remember in that video, I was questioning about the car. I was questioning about the phones. I was questioning about them tracking the cars. Look, the news, I said that way before the news came out and said that. Why? Because I'm hood educated, not lame related. I done been, I'm talking about, listen, I done been in them courtrooms. I've been investigated. Uh, and I've been in that cell sitting there decaying. So I know what I'm talking about. I'm not 100%, but I know what I'm talking about when it comes to how these peoples are going to play with you when you get to killing people and doing serious crimes against people. They not going to play no games with you. It's over with. Now, let's get into the demo. So y'all mean to tell me, right? This brother right here went to Avis Rental Car Services and rented the black Subaru that they did the drive-by in. Hold on, man, wait a minute. Like, what in your mind, <laughs> like what in your mind thought that, you know what, we finna go slide on this fool right here, but we need a car. Don't worry about it, bro. I'm finna go rent a car in my name and we are about to go do the drive-by in the car that I rented in my name. And we gonna get away with that. Hmm? Hold on. Wait a minute. Now, when he went to go rent it, when he went to go rent that car, let me tell you what type of evidence that they got against him that's connecting him to the car. One, he rented it, it's in his name. Two, they got camera footage of the car sitting in his driveway. Three, when they started going down there, when they left San Antonio, going down to Houston, uh, license plate trackers recorded his every move. They traced him through his license plates. They get down there to Houston, they go steal some, some uh, license plates from a different car, Throw it on, throw it on the Subaru. Like that's gonna just change everything. Now we got a whole new car. Nah, they recorded you with the license plate on your way down there to Houston. 
Now, when I heard that alarm bells got the ringing in my head, ding, 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 ding. So for them to rent a car and to head down to Houston after the killing of Omar happened in San Antonio, how did they know to go exactly where BTB Savage was? Right? Like, how did they know we finna go rent a car and we finna go slide on dude? Houston is huge. Houston, big city. But no, they go directly straight to where BTB Savage was. His Airbnb. They went directly to it. How did that happen? How did they get that information? Who dropped his load saying that, hey, look, he right here. How did they find that out? Right? So now they get down there in Houston. And like I say, they stole the little license place and threw them on there and think that that was going to magically just change the vehicle. And then they went and did the drive by and killed BTB Savage. Now, before doing the drive by, they lamped on BTB Savage for hours, for two days. They lamping, waiting on him. Where he lives at. His uh, Airbnb, Airbnb. Two days. How did they get that information? So now, after the two days, they finally catch up with him and they put the work in. They thinking in their mind, oh man, we did the coldest thing. Now we finna switch these plates out and we finna head right back to San Antonio. No, it's not that easy. Right after the killing, right after they killed BTB Savage, license plate trackers recorded them on their way back to San Antonio. But not only that, y'all, not only that. Listen to me. The phones. The whole time they were sitting out there lamping in front of uh, uh, BTB Savage crib, they phones is pinging off those towers, telling on them, letting the police know, hey, they right here. Yeah, yeah, Montreal. No, he can't say that he was over there because he got that phone, the phone in his name, and this is his phone number right here. They got the car coming down there, and they got this phone sitting right here. Yeah, here you go. Technology going to tell on you all the time. It's over with. Get out the way. Go get you a job. Go get you a legit hustle. The technology going to tell on you. So now, once they get back to Houston after doing this killing, right, once they get back to, I'm not Houston, once they get back to San Antonio, they think they smooth. They done got away. Not understanding that the police is up on them. So the police got a search warrant for the vehicle. Police catch them in traffic, pull them over. Tell me why when the police search the vehicle, y'all, there's shell casings inside of the vehicle. That match the same type of shell casings that was found on the murder scene of BTB Savage. So now, after they seen that shell casing, they seized Montreal phone and his fiance phone. Come on, man. Come on. Now, we got to understand something, y'all. They got this car sitting out in front of uh, Montreal's house, recorded on camera. After the killing, they got him wiping the whole vehicle down. On camera, wiping the vehicle down. Yeah, we done got away with this murder here. Clean off all the, the DNA, all our fingerprints off this bad boy. We straight. Nah, uh-uh. That camera tell it on y'all. Just like the camera just told on this boy here, that camera gonna tell on y'all. Get out the way. Leave it alone. It's done. 
I'm telling y'all, ain't no way around it. Look, it gets deeper, right? Now, they said that, as a matter of fact, check it out. The elaborate plan to kill rapper BTB Savage started taking shape four days before he died. Y'all heard what that man said? He said that they was planning to kill BTB Savage four days before they actually killed him. So after I heard that, I got to like, you know, doing my research. I said, four days. I said, okay, man. Uh, when did that Vlad interview drop, right? From my understanding, March 26. Okay, cool. When did BTB Savage lost his life to gun violence? March 30th. Four days. So there it is. Regardless of what you want to believe, right? Regardless of what you want to believe, we got to understand that Omar was killed in February. BTB Savage was cool. After that Vlad interview, March 26th, that man went to go rent that vehicle after watching that interview. That's four days. March 26th to March 30th, that's four days. So regardless of what you want to believe, but like I said before, I believe in my mind, just from a hood perspective, after watching something like that, like if I was still in my gangbang lifestyle, after watching this man uh, talk about my homeboy or my family members, you know, dying words and what they did to him and stuff like that, that's going to incite me. Even if I was mad before, I might have let it die down, but that and then them pictures, that's going to excite me to say, uh-uh, nah, something got to happen. And unfortunately, something did happen. One thing we got to understand is this right here, y'all. We dealing with gangsters. And what I mean by that is that uh, from my understanding and my research, Montreal was a part of Stick Gang, which is an offshoot of the Bloodstone villains down there in San Antonio. So the one, the one thing that we got to realize when you dealing with gangs is this right here. Gangs will kill you behind their reputation. Uh, gangs can't look soft in front of other gangs and stuff like that. And when you do the stuff that BTB Savage was doing, uh, making that gang look weak and stuff like that, somebody got to step up. Why? Because it's pride, it's ego, and it's reputation. And not only that, it's mandatory. When you dealing with gangs and you do something wrong to a gang member, it's mandatory. Now, somebody might say, hey, you know what, man, you know, let that slide. But being that a gang member was killed, that overrides all that. That overrides all that. Look, y'all ain't got to slide. I'm going to go slide because they killed the brother. And those are the rules. Any gangster that's on here right now know exactly what I'm talking about. Even if your OGs, your elites, or your governors, or whatever, say, hey, no, nah, y'all let that slide. All you got to do is go to the rule book and say, hey, it say don't let nobody harm one of us, and dude killed one of us, so let me go take care of that according to the rules that's laid down right here. I got the okay to do that, and it's mandatory. That's just how it go. So I believe that that's what happened in this situation right here. I believe that it was too much chatter. It was too much of that going on. And they had to go get their get back. Now, my thing is this right here, y'all. I wonder how did they know where BTB Savage was. And I wonder how the police know and understand that they've been planning to kill BTB Savage Four days before they killed him. Somebody in there doing this right here. Somebody in there doing this right here. We got to understand something, y'all. That pressure, it'll bust a pipe. 
And for you young brothers and for you classic brothers that's ripping and running these streets, man, and thinking that it's all fun and games and thinking that this lifestyle is a video game, look at, look, look at this. Learn from this right here. Learn from this right here. This man right here, best planning, got him sitting in the county jail right now facing murder charges. So all your best planning that y'all think y'all doing out here, I'm going to do it this way. We're going to slide that way. No, look, there's cameras watching y'all. License plate trackers watching y'all. It ain't no way around it. All you got to do is change your life, change your mentality, and change your location. This is hood educated, not lame related. Peace and love and y'all take care of yourself out there. If I said anything that caused you to think, please subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already and give me a like. And if you're feeling generous, make a small donation to the channel. Now, before I depart, allow me to give a shout out to some of the blessings that I received this week. Let me give a shout out to the homeboy Juan Alagas for the $9.99. Super thanks. Appreciate that, bro. Let me give a shout out to the homegirl, Honey C, for the $9.99. Super thanks. Appreciate that, sister. Let me give a shout out to the homie, Lawrence Peacock, for the $25 cash shop. I appreciate that, Lawrence, man. Good looking out, bro. Let me give a shout out to the homeboy, Troy Polinias, for the $5 cash shop. Appreciate that, Troy. Let me give a shout out to Andre Green for the $5 and 55 cent cash app. Appreciate that. I think you're trying to say something with all them fives, but it could just be me. Let me give a shout out to Adria Haley for the five dollar cash app. This is hood educated, not lame related. Appreciate all the love and support. Y'all take care of yourself out there.